You're listening to a podcast from the South China Morning Post. On one side, the American middle class is shrinking as wages stagnate. On the other, China's key segment of society is suffering weak expansion amid an uneven economic recovery. Either way, post-pandemic problems are hurting the middle class. China has seen a significant increase in the size and influence of its middle class during the past decades of reform and opening up. But some policies aimed at private enterprises have, in fact, been seen to slow its momentum. Gavin Chu, an independent UK-based commentator, said, "This may have weakened the expansion of the middle class." Gavin added, "An aging population would also sap China's labor force and social security, adding another hindrance to middle class growth." The decline of the middle class indicates that it is more difficult for China to break out of the middle income trap and transform into a developed country. There have long been concerns about the so-called middle income trap. This is a stage of economic development in which income levels stagnate, preventing a country from joining the ranks of rich nations like the U.S. and Singapore. The U.S. and Singapore both have a GDP per capita that's above seventy thousand U.S. dollars. According to the latest figures by the World Bank, China's GDP per capita in 2022 is twelve thousand seven hundred and twenty U.S. dollars. China has set a goal of reaching the per capita income level of a medium developed country by 2035, with a projected GDP per capita of at least 20,000 U.S. dollars. But China may still become caught in the middle income trap if economic growth stagnates, and reaching its goal could prove difficult to achieve amid its population crisis. Academics on both sides have warned that an aging population, as well as economic pressure caused by tense U.S.-China relations and hobbled private investor confidence, are creating obstacles to the growth of China's middle class. A Chinese government human resources and social security official had already predicted in December that the coronavirus pandemic, plus a bleak global economic recovery, had led to downsizing and cuts in hiring. That means fewer new urban jobs for the middle class. Since 2017, Beijing has said China has 400 million middle-income earners, or people who earn between 14,000 and 70,000 U.S. dollars a year. Together, they represent around 28 percent of China's 1.4 billion people. The group of business people, managers, doctors, lawyers, and teachers are seen as a key driver of the economy, but they are experiencing a brand new kind of anxiety because their income growth is set to slow or even stagnate. This presents a challenge to the government's long-term blueprint for national prosperity. Industries are laying off staff or cutting pay for white-collar employees and executives, while sluggish domestic stock and property markets revalue their wealth status and prompt a spending rethink. It is not a good sign for Beijing. It has been a long-standing consensus globally that only a rapid expansion of China's middle class can ensure global investors' belief that the mainland market is good enough to allow increased discretionary spending on higher-quality goods and services. But Kelly Fang and her husband, a Guangdong-based entrepreneur, are considering whether to cut jobs for the first time at their cosmetics manufacturing business that they've been running for more than a decade because of sluggish post-pandemic demand. Kelly said, "My husband and I are feeling great financial pressure because the business keeps shrinking." She and the private entrepreneurs she knows are feeling the chill of sluggish domestic demand, even though coronavirus restrictions have been lifted. 
And she said that this year's annual 618 Shopping Festival, which is China's second largest online shopping event in June, was even worse than last year, when coronavirus-induced lockdowns resulted in big losses for suppliers. Kelly expects domestic demand to be weak for a long time, so she's also cutting back on unnecessary spending herself. She said, The tuition fee, rent, and living expenses are over $76,700 US dollars a year. My wish for this year is to be able to pay all the bills. The number of newly indebted families will increase rapidly, either because of failures in investment or shrinking business demands. Her cousin, Stephen Fung, is a senior engineer with the overseas business sector of a leading internet company, and he's worried about the possibility of being fired. Stephen said, My biggest wish for this year is to keep the job because my current employer is already a leader in the industry, so the next employer will not be able to pay my current level of income anyway, or even half of the current income. And more importantly, I don't know how long the next job will last. Across the Pacific, flat wage growth and a drop in university enrollments are seen to be impeding growth of the U.S. income median, which has been a cornerstone of the country's historic prosperity. According to the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics, wages and salaries had risen sharply in 2020 and 2021. But U.S. wages and salaries rose by only 5% between 2022 and 2023. That's just slightly above the 4.7% increase between 2021 and 2022, when inflation rose due to supply chain disruptions, including China's coronavirus lockdowns. And U.S. Department of Education figures showed that undergraduate enrollments fell by 11.85% from 2009 to 2021, with 15.4 million enrollments in 2021. And the American middle class has fallen from 61% of the population in 1971 to 50% last year, according to a Pew Research Center analysis of government data. Uh, so what, what's it like graduating into this market? It's pretty tough, to be honest with you. <clears throat> Albert Ma is from China's eastern Shandong province. He moved to San Francisco with his family when he was young. So I would say I'm fortunate enough. Uh, my parents immigrated to this country. They had like 500 bucks in their pocket, nothing else. I want to help them. But luckily, you know, they achieved the American dream, which is, in my opinion, just not achievable nowadays. And the American middle class is dying. It's just difficult to make a living nowadays, especially to buy a house or a car, have financial stability, you know. This past summer, Albert earned his bachelor's degree at the University of California, Berkeley. And over the course of five months, he sent around 150 resumes to potential employers. But he didn't get hired by anyone. And even when he got close to landing a job, he said employers would start ghosting him. That's the worst thing I know. It's... Like, I put all this effort in, you couldn't have the common decency to tell me no. I applied to, like, that much, and I was just felt done, so done, you know. So I was like, I don't want, you know what, I'm sick of looking for someone to hire me. I'm going to hire myself to start my own business. Yeah. In July, Albert opened a mobile coffee cart on his university campus. How long do you plan to keep looking? Keep looking for a job? Yeah. Well, I'm done for now, I'm done looking. Just um, going to do this. Yeah, my parents, they want to convince me to look for a job or, you know, do something more professional. But I think coffee makes me happy. Like, all right. That's why I like happy. Right. Hey, how's it going? Uh, can I do a cold brew? Yeah. Well, I'm a small arch. Oh, that's The Pew Research Center said financial hardships caused by COVID-19 have hit mostly lower and middle-income American families, with the median income of middle-income households having dropped by 2.1%. Harry Holzer, a professor at Georgetown University, said that wage growth in the U.S. has been strong at the bottom, but perhaps not enough to move lower wage workers into the middle class. 
Our college enrollments are also declining, which might not be great for future middle-class growth. Professor Holzer said people without university-level degrees normally earn a lower level of income, though enrollment could pick up again if a slowing economy threatens jobs. He added that employers, though, are exploring alternatives to university degrees as hiring criteria. At one of America's oldest high-tech firms, IBM, half the U.S. job openings do not require a bachelor's degree. IBM spokeswoman Jessica Chen said they're working on getting that number even higher. She said the skills a person has today could be obsolete in a few years. Embracing candidates with industry-recognized certifications and those who have been skilled through alternative routes increases the size of the qualified talent pool. But according to Derek Scissors, a resident scholar at the American Enterprise Institute public policy think tank, the American middle class is much richer than the group in China. Derek said, you can try to adjust for purchasing power, but it's much more difficult than some people pretend. And the vast bulk of the Chinese middle class is in cities, and the cost of living there is not much below that of the U.S. Gavin Chu, the UK-based commentator, said that back in China, some growing industries may come under pressure as trade frictions and technological conflicts intensify with the West, which further affects middle-class employment and income. Jade Zung and her husband work as executives for tech and financing firms in China. They own a 70-square-meter three-bedroom flat, plus two condos in Shenzhen. Jade said a lot of people in her city have borrowed heavily to invest in property, but found that values are decreasing. Jade and her husband owe 60,000 yuan, or 8,245 U.S. dollars in monthly mortgage payments for their three properties, on top of tuition for their son's private school. Jade said, every month there's no surplus at all. The total value of her properties has fallen by a quarter compared with the peak in 2020. Jade added that her family is walking a tightrope between enjoying a middle-class lifestyle with all the trimmings and dropping out of the group outright if the couple lose their jobs. Job losses in high-income sectors have taken another swipe at the middle class in China. 19 of the major 22 brokerage firms had seen an obvious decline in their per capita salaries in the past year. Household job stability in the first quarter of 2023 fell below the line of prosperity to the lowest level since the beginning of the pandemic. The number of properties up for sale by owners has surged in many Chinese cities. In Shenzhen, more than 17,000 properties were listed between the end of January and mid-May this year. In Shanghai, there were around 170,000 vacant flats on the secondary market in mid-May, with only 18,000 second-hand homes traded in April. That's down by 26% from March. And as 70% of assets held by urban households, most of which are in the middle class, are in property, according to the People's Bank of China, this is a worrying trend. Chinese income growth was 3.8% in the first quarter of 2023, down from less than 4.5% a year ago. Yan Chao, a 34-year-old manager at a Shanghai-based advertising company, is afraid of losing her middle-class status. She said her income can't support her daily life since the pandemic, and her parents, who are retired doctors, have been paying most of the mortgage and living costs for her family. Some Chinese citizens fear any future health crisis or geopolitical upsets will take down even more middle-class income earners. 
Stephen Fong, the engineer, said if the relationship between China and the United States continues to deteriorate, or if there will be another epidemic, or even a sudden war, any one of them we can't afford. But the worries are getting worse every year. Patrick Bacalso, who immigrated to the U.S. from the Philippines when he was six, has held information technology jobs for around 20 years and has been on a steady path to his current management position. He owns a house in the pricey San Francisco Bay area and focuses on the needs of his two children rather than trying to advance further. You could always want more, Patrick said, but I'm already pretty satisfied. (laughs) 